Ah, sleeping beauty, the poster girl for snoozing in style. Clearly, she has mastered the art of beauty sleep. If there were a Miss Naptime universe pageant, she'd win it hands down. Look at that golden hair curling around her like a well-trained pet. It's the sort of hair that says, yes, I woke up like this, and by this I mean absolutely fabulous. It's got more bounce than a trampoline convention, more shine than a car wax commercial. Then there's that dress, positively dripping with white and gold. It's as if she raided Liberace's wardrobe and thought, yes, this is the perfect nap attire. It's not just a gown, it's a statement. I may be sleeping, but that doesn't mean my fashion sense is. Let's not forget the backdrop, a kaleidoscope of blue and gold. It's as if she demanded, I want my surroundings to match my outfit when I nap. Talk about coordination. This image screams, I'm more glamorous in my sleep than you are awake. As a wallpaper, it'll be a constant cheeky reminder to up your nap game. After all, why just sleep when you can sleep in style? And remember, folks, it's not just a beauty sleep if you wake up looking like a supermodel. It's a power nap. Ah, the sea monster. A portrait of a creature who took the phrase making a splash a bit too literally. Just look at that face. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he's got a serious case of morning breath. And those tentacles? They're like underwater red velvet curtains, except with a tad more grip. I mean, talk about a face only a mother could love. Or perhaps a very nearsighted squid. He's got so many wrinkles, he makes a prune look like a bowling ball. And those eyes. It's as if he's constantly surprised by his own reflection. The color palette here is rather festive, don't you think red and green? It's like Christmas at sea if Santa was a giant, somewhat perturbed sea monster. I suppose it does give a new spin to I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. And that tiny boat in comparison, it's like a toy in a bathtub with a particularly enthusiastic toddler. You almost expect to see the sailors yelling, no, no, we said we wanted to see the world, not see the world. The atmosphere is so thick with horror you could cut it with a knife. Or perhaps one of those handy tentacles. It's like a maritime version of a haunted house, complete with the resident ghoul. As a wallpaper, this would be a constant reminder to pay your respects to the ocean. And maybe reconsider that deep-sea diving trip you were planning. After all, who wants to disturb Mr. Grumpy Gills during his morning swim? Ah, behold, demon eating ice cream. The delightful paradox of a menacing, otherworldly being finding joy in the simple pleasures of frozen dairy treats. It's like finding out that the big bad wolf is a vegetarian, or that Dracula flosses after every meal. I mean, just look at him. With those red eyes, red horns, and a blue face, he's like a walking, talking traffic light that got stuck on caution. And that pink hair, it's as if a cotton candy machine exploded and he thought, yes, this is the new look for me. His orange and brown jacket has a touch of 70s disco fever about it. It's as if he raided Elton John's wardrobe and thought, Yes, this will go perfectly with my ice cream. And speaking of that ice cream, it's not your everyday vanilla or chocolate. No, this is a demon special, a flavor so unique it would make Baskin Robbins weep. I bet it's a taste to die for, literally. His expression, oh, it's priceless. Who knew consuming ice cream could be such a serious business? It's as if he's contemplating the meaning of existence in every lick. As a wallpaper, this image is a constant, colorful reminder not to judge a book by its cover, or in this case, a demon by his horns. After all, everyone has a soft spot for ice cream, even if they're from the fiery pits of hell. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, he's a handsome devil. I mean, who knew the underworld had such good-looking occupants? Maybe it's the ice cream diet. Perhaps we've been doing it wrong all along. Ah, the Chinese princess, a vision of elegance and grandeur, draped in a white dress that's cleaner than my browsing history, and that hair, as dark and shiny as a moonless night. You can bet there are no bad hair days in her palace. She's got red plump lips like cherries in the snow. I'm guessing she's the only one in the kingdom who can pull off that shade. It's the kind of red that says, I'm royal, I'm regal, and yes, this color is named after me. The golden jewelry with white pearls, oh my. It's as if a swarm of oysters threw up on her and she thought, yes, this is the perfect accessory. It's not just jewelry, it's a testament to her status. I'm so royal, even my pearls have a crown. And those brown eyes, so mesmerizing they could convince a panda to share its bamboo. 
She's not just looking at the viewer, she's piercing your soul, making you wonder, do I bow? Do I curtsy? Do I offer her my dessert? Now, as a desktop wallpaper, this is not just an image, it's an experience. Every time you minimize your windows, you'll be greeted by Her Royal Highness, reminding you to straighten your back, hold your head high, and for heaven's sake, put on some lip balm. In the end, folks, remember this. Being a princess isn't just about the crown, the jewels, or the perfect pout. It's about the attitude, the grace, and the ability to rock pearls like you were born in a clam. Now that's royal. Ah, the sitting demon. A fiendish fellow who clearly knows the importance of a well-coordinated outfit. I mean, if you're going to have a demonic day out, you might as well match your outfit to your skin, right? It's called fashion, darling. Just look at his eyes, as blue as a Monday morning. It's as if he's been binge-watching soap operas and can't help but shed a tear at the tragic love triangles. And those horns, glistening like a devilish tiara. It's like he's Miss Universe for the underworld. This chap is the epitome of red on red on red. He's so committed to his color scheme, I wouldn't be surprised if his favorite song was Lady in Red, except he's the gentleman in red. And possibly the cutlery, the furniture, and the house pet in red, too. And that pose, hands together, deep in thought. What could he be pondering? The meaning of life? The heat of hell? Or perhaps he's just wondering where he left his keys. This image is so red, it's like a tomato had a fight with a beetroot in a strawberry field. It's 80% red, 19% black, and 1% blue. It's practically a color-coded meal plan for a bull. As a wallpaper, this image would be a constant reminder of the importance of color coordination and the fact that even demons have their thoughtful moments. And let's not forget, he's a devilishly handsome bloke. It's almost enough to make you overlook the whole demon thing. Ah, Zeus, god of lightning the electrifying epitome of power and control. Now here's a guy who knows how to make an entrance. He doesn't just walk into a room, he arrives in a crackling, dazzling display of light. Talk about being the life and light of the party. Look at him, all muscles and might, like he's just finished a particularly challenging session of celestial crossfit. His biceps alone could bench press Mount Olympus. And that gray beard and hair, they scream, silver fox, louder than a hound on a hunt. His eyes, oh, they're as red as a sunburnt tomato. It's like he's been up all night binge-watching his favorite series on Olympus Plus and forgot the eye drops. Now that's commitment. And that lightning, oh my. It's not just for show, you know. It's his own personal bug zapper. Pesky flies don't stand a chance. It's also great for a quick barbecue or jump-starting a stalled chariot. As a wallpaper, this image is a powerful reminder to charge ahead in life pun absolutely intended, and seize each day with the confidence and vigor of a Greek god. Each time you glance at your screen, you'll be inspired to face your challenges head on, and maybe, just maybe, consider signing up for that gym membership. And let's not forget, Zeus is a good-looking guy. I mean, who knew the god of lightning could also be the god of smoldering looks? It's enough to make you want to brush up on your ancient Greek mythology. Remember, folks, it's not just a myth if you can rock a beard like that. Ah, Blackhorn Monster, the living embodiment of size matters. This guy makes Godzilla look like a house gecko. Just one look at him and even the bravest knights would say, Nope, I think I left my courage in my other pants. Those black horns are like twin skyscrapers of terror, making even the bravest soul consider a career in running away very fast. It's like he headbutted a tree, got stuck with a couple of branches, and thought, yes, this is my new look. The landscape matches him perfectly, black, rough, and as welcoming as a porcupine in a balloon factory. It's the kind of place that makes Mordor look like a summer resort. And that red mouth. It's like he's been snacking on chili peppers and forgot his chapstick. With a mouth that fiery, who needs a barbecue? He's the ultimate grill master. The tiny human in the frame really gives a sense of scale. I mean, compared to this beast, we're all just ants waiting to be squished. Talk about an inferiority complex. As a wallpaper, this image is a constant reminder that no matter how bad your day is going, at least you're not facing off against a four-legged horned behemoth. And let's not forget, despite his monstrous appearance, he's rather impressive in a terrifying keep-you-awake-at-night kind of way. 
Remember, folks, it's not the size of the monster in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the... Actually, scratch that. In this case, it's definitely the size of the monster. Well, feast your eyes on Evil Android Skull, the piece that asks the question, what if the Terminator and Skeletor had a baby? It's high-tech horror at its finest, a glowing testament to the fact that even in the afterlife, a good Wi-Fi connection is essential. Just look at those red glowing eyes, like twin laser pointers set to incinerate. They're not just staring at the viewer, they're downloading your soul. It's like he's got his own personal hotspot, but instead of Wi-Fi, it's pure, unadulterated terror. And that mouth, oh my, it's like a furnace in the middle of a summer heat wave. I bet he never has to worry about food getting stuck in his teeth, mainly because anything that dares to venture into that fiery furnace of a mouth is promptly toasted to a crisp. The orange and black background adds a touch of Halloween flair. It's like he's perpetually ready for trick or treating, and by that, I mean he's the trick that makes you want to hand over all your treats. The dynamic and exaggerated facial expressions give him a certain charm. If by charm, you mean the ability to haunt your dreams for the foreseeable future. As a wallpaper, this image is a constant reminder that even in the age of technology, there's room for a good old-fashioned scare. Each time you look at your screen, you'll be greeted by his fiery gaze, prompting you to update your antivirus software and maybe consider investing in a fire extinguisher. In the end, folks, remember this. He may be an evil android skull, but he's our evil android skull. And in a strange, spine-chilling way, that's kind of comforting. Or maybe that's just the fear talking.